I will tell you this. Piper Sandler came up with some interesting research uh, about how big of a deal this is for the bond market. I want to bring a Walter Waltz, management president, Rebecca Walzer. So, Rebecca, 10-year Treasury curve uh, could uh, rise if, bond, if Biden wins. Uh, and, and they actually put a pretty good illustration to kind of show. So Biden here, you know, yields going higher than, of course, under, under, uh, under President Trump. And here's the thing. When President Trump was elected, I, I'll never forget, because, you know, you and I both, we scour these numbers. Animal spirits were instantly, instantly, I mean, the, the market exploded. Yeah. NFIB exploded. NAHB exploded. Every sort of metric on that measures animal spirits within the business community, within the investment community, soared. And I suspect that would be the same uh, the same thing this time around as well. Yeah, and uh, the thing I'm going to say here, Charles, this might surprise you, is this is actually a bad thing. I know investors want to see yields. That well, some want to see yields, but to your point, though, <laughs> bond yields are higher the last two days and the stock market's getting hammered. Right, but the, the reason that I suspect that this is the case is because what this shows is that Biden's got a $7.3 trillion 2025 budget, and he is just going to spend and spend and spend, and he's going to expect a, 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 a you know, an accommodative Fed, and that's why we want, we're pushing these rate cuts so much. Has anyone stopped to say why? Why are we pushing the rate cuts? The market's doing good. They keep telling the labor market is strong. Right. Why do we need to cut rates right now? Like, we're not, this is, what this is telling me is that we are in a position now of if we do not keep stimulating, if we don't have easy monetary, modern, modern monetary theory, our economy will crash. It has now been built so high on such lower for longer that it can't sustain higher for longer, and we've got to cut. And that tells you that that's the beginning of a debt spiral, Charles, and the collapse of a currency. So we don't want higher yields because that just shows the reason they are higher under Biden is because they're going to have to keep, like, to your point, you just had the segment of how much the Treasury is buying right. itself. Right. That is going to have to continue under an accommodative presidency. We have to go in the opposite that's direction. Kind of hand, Austerity. Though, we have to go to austerity now. Right. We can't afford $5 trillion dollars of non-discretionary and interest rate payments on a yearly basis. Well, I don't I don't know that either party was ready for austerity. So I know, I it's know. It's really not President Biden. President Biden, to me, has been the best president in history for wealthy Americans, particularly <laughs> the elites. I wanted to ask you about this as someone with like 73 degrees. Uh, <laughs> Scott Rasmussen did this poll, the top 1%. Yeah. And they were asked, you know, what if, how would the outcome be if only people with college degrees were able to vote? The elites said, 69% of them said it would be better. They actually said 69% said it would be better. Overall voters think 15% say better, maybe thinking they can make more informed choices. Now, we're talking about the same folks that just had these college protests. Yes. Look at these college protests. This is tuition, yep. and these are Pell Grants, right? So yep. essentially, the most, elite, the most elite schools have the encampments and everything else. So these are the folks that we want to be the only ones who can vote in America. These people right here who have all the money, still have all the outrage, still have the encampments, still intimidate their fellow students. That's who we want to be in charge of our uh, our nation, to only have the right to vote. That's like all the economists that believe everything. is going to keep going forever, and this is all the people that will be voting. Obviously, reality, uh, there is a bill to finally be paid, and we've been able to, as the world's reserve currency, leverage that position for the last, you know, really since 1944, but we've been able to leverage it to our benefit, but that is ending. And I know people don't want to hear the reality, but to, to Daniel's point that he said earlier, it never works. You will pay the bill at some point. And people, if we can implement some measures before it collapses, what great. What will we measure? What will, what's the first smallest step in the right direction? Well, entitlements have to get reformed. I mean, you know, even just all of the people that have come into the country that are getting Medicaid benefits. Why is that happening? I mean, there's a lot, Charles, that we give away in this country that no one even understands that we do. And that has to be paid by somebody. And if it's not getting paid by taxpayers, it's getting paid by debt. And that's what we've been doing. I don't think people realize you can you can live in this country and never have to work your entire life. Yeah. I, never, I know people who've never had a job in their 60s, never worked able -bodied a day in their, people. Able bodied people never worked a single day in their lives. And that, to me, is one of the big crux of the problem. Greece and uh, what was it? The, the collapse of it. Remember the oh, sure, charity sure. that went through and the people were it's, outraged? And what's so funny is Germany was the one like, you guys got to be austerity. have austerity. Now they don't want any austerity. Exactly. Thanks, Rebecca. Appreciate Thank you. It. All right, folks, still more to come on. Um,